Alright guys, here's a little video on how to chip your Nissan 240SX ECU. It's pretty quite simple. Um, you really need is a daughter board, a 2x20 pin board, and uh, two chips. They have to be 8-bit chips because our ECUs are 16-bit, so you need two 8-bits to actually have it work right. Now there has been word going around that I have heard that there are dual cam ECUs out there that are 8-bit. I have yet to see any, so more than likely you guys have a 26 or a, tw a 72 or something. So what you're going to need to begin with is Moats.net is where I get most of my stuff from. Here is a Moats daughter board designed for you know KA dual cams. Um, pretty sure I can socket that into an SR and make it work the same way. Um, but today we're going to be doing a KA24DE from a 92. Pretty sure it's a 92. I pulled it out of one of my cars. Um, so let's get started. Alright, you can buy these from Moats.net. I don't remember the price. I want to say they're somewhere between $50 to $75, I want to say. Um, they're built pretty good and their support is really good if you need any help. You need one daughter board and then you're going to need two see if I can get this in here SST chips now these this is an 8-bit chip itself um, I've got two of them simply because like I said it's a 16-bit EC so you need two 8-bits to make this work these are pretty cheap you can buy those from most.net for probably I think $10 for 10 of them or 15 of them I'm not, I don't remember Let's get started. I already, I've already daughtered board this one already, so I'm just going to go over it with you so you can actually see it's not that hard to do. A lot of people say they don't know how to do it, but they can. It's really easy. Um, here's the top cover removed. Now, don't worry about what's on this side of the board itself. This doesn't matter right now. Right now it matters this right here. I put this in here. This is a 2 by 20 pin that you can get from Moats.net. I think I bought five for three dollars. I mean they're extremely cheap and they're just really easy to work with. Um, your ECUs won't have this but what you will have is uh, just a flat surface with little holes. You'll see all the holes there that are already soldered shut. You need to get a desolder and desolder it. Now there are two styles. There's one with a little um, squishy ball that can suck the solder out that heats itself or you can go to Radio Shack and for like 15 bucks buy a little pen style one that you'll use one hand to heat it up and the other hand to hit the button to release and create a vacuum and suck it out. That is what I used. I had it desoldered in probably a minute and 30 seconds probably. Um, it's a little tedious because you are working in such a tight area but it's pretty simple. Now when you get it desoldered You'll have, to, you'll have all these holes empty. These holes will be completely empty. You'll put the pin board short ends first. Now if you look at the pin board when you get it, the pin board, these pins right here themselves are, are kind of tall. These needles themselves. The other side is they're shorter. The shorter side goes down first because this is where actually the daughter board slides onto and if you don't have the tall side up, it's not gonna it's not gonna work and you're gonna have to desolder it and redo it again and it's just a pain so long side up you pop it through and you push it down evenly make sure it's evenly because these needles will move a little bit once you're down evenly then what you do is you individually solder each little piece one by one that's kinda hard to get it focused on here but each little one you drop solder every single one all the way to the end both sides once that's done, then your daughter board can actually, here's a daughter board, your daughter board can actually, let's see if I can get this in here, it clips in and pushes down, installed. That's pretty easy. Now, a quick little reminder, when you're putting your chips into the daughter board, there is a specific way they need to go. I've seen people put them in backwards and actually overheat their ECUs. So if you look on this sideboard, you'll see a little notch right here. That little notch. 
if you grab one of your chips, there's a little notch right on the end of it. The notch goes with the notch. So you can see the notch on this side right here. They need to go that way. If they are not that way, you're going to burn up an ECU. So, now that a daughter board in this place, all we need to do is tell the ECU to stop reading from the factory location and read from the new location. Sounds difficult? Really not. All right. Let me turn this around so you can see. On the back side of the ECU, here's where we put in our, our pin board. Right here, you'll have a jumper. It says CJ1 on the board itself, right here on the side. But it'll have a little jumper right here. It'll look like one of these, but it'll be right here. It'll say CJ1. It'll be soldered here and here. These are a pain. Um, just tilt your soldering iron down at an angle, melt it, and get your desolder and suck it out. Same thing with this side, and then you can actually use a little flat head and kind of pop it up. There are two ways of doing this. You can reuse that if you haven't da if you didn't damage it. All it is is a jumper. It just sends a signal from here to here. You can go to Radio Shack and buy actual jumpers. Um, I think it's four dollars for a whole big container full. You only need one. Or you can do what I did and just grab a small gauge wire and use it as a jumper because a signal is going to follow it onto the other side. Now it could be it can't be too long, it can't be too short, or it could be too short. It'd be really difficult to put in there. But um, below it says CJ2. This is where the signal's coming from the ECU, looking to where it's going to read its bin file from. So it's going to come out here, follow, and go into here. Now CJ1, these two right here, will not be in use anymore. Now you can get a switch. If you're running a slight KAT setup, um, a T25 or 28 on 6, six or 7 pounds of boost, and you want a daily with your factory tune, you can actually get a switch. And daily on this tune, turn your car off, hit the switch, and have it read from this tune, which will read from the daughter board if you have an actual KAT tune from RS Enthropy or from somebody else, or even if you tuned it yourself. There are lots of tunes out there that you can get off the internet. Uh, I'll post a couple on 240-sx.com. Um, I'll put some stock ones up there. I'll put some other ones that I have laying around. I have a couple KAT ones that I've used. I have SR ones. That I, if you're doing an SR, this is the same way for an SR, by the way. But you soldered CJ1 to 2, or CJ1 to 1 right here, just looping down. Now, once that's soldered together, you could put your chips in and your ECU is good to go. I am using a 26 ECU, which is a uh, 91 or 92 uh, Nissan 240SX dual cam. So that's in place, ready to go. Um, then on the next video I'll make, depending on the response I get for this, I'll teach you how to put a tune on your chips and put the chips on here and actually have it work on your car. So check out 240sx.com. The link's in the description below. If you have any questions, go ahead feel free. Um, I've been doing this for a little while now, so hopefully I can help you. If I can't help you, I can probably steer you in the right direction on where to get help. Um, the website... It'll have an article on a more in-depth on how to do this with pictures and along with this video. But there will be links to where you can buy the daughter board, where you can buy everything you need to do this. Alright guys, check out 240-sx.com for more information. And uh, like and follow. And we'll wait until the next video.